So let me introduce uh, uh, about this. Um, I met him in uh, Taiwan. He's stuck in, oh, you have a new haircut. Oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> well, it looks very clean. Good. Ah, so I met him in Taiwan because uh, I think that time he was stuck in Taiwan. <laughs> okay. And uh, I think he can't go back to China now. So um, he's waiting for me to go to do barbecue with him uh, in Taiwan. So uh, <laughs> see him soon. Okay. So, uh, but this he, he, he he's an expert in uh, Amazon uh, Europe. Uh, he he managed some uh, big accounts as well. So maybe uh, without further ado, I let him take the stage and then uh, I sh let's hear from him. Okay, the stage is all yours. Thank yeah. You. So well, thank you very much for everyone to participate. Uh, I'm Baptiste. Uh, I think I can just uh, sort of uh, start going with my presentation and then. Uh, we can open some, uh, some questions. So today I'm gonna to talk about uh, how to be successful selling on Amazon Europe. And uh, what I wanted to give you guys is not the typical uh, hacks and, and tricks on the technicalities on how you do, but more uh, from a mindset perspective, which I think is the most uh, important success factor of everything in Europe. So I'm gonna share my screen, and uh, we're gonna we're gonna start going with the presentation. Okay. okay great. Yep. We we see the screen. That's perfect. So if you guys have any question, uh, I'm typically just gonna go with the presentation, and then I will address uh, those questions at the end. I hope it's okay with everyone else. All right. So my name is Baptiste Pozier. Uh, I am the founder of Outburst and Social Marketplaces, which uh, I use for sourcing at the moment. Uh, I will be coaching in a few months uh, for uh, Western clients. Uh, right now, I'm also the European and uh, USA Marketplace Director at Swiss uh, F E-Commerce Limited, which is a company based in Guangzhou. And uh, we train, uh, you know, manufacturers in China to get set up on Amazon and Europe as well. And by the way, I'm also uh, running this little Facebook group, uh, which is Seller Supreme. So, you know, I'm an e-commerce enthusiast and digital marketer enthusiast. And I run this little group on Facebook. You can meet me there or on all the social media platforms for the, all that matter. Okay, let's roll. Do you still believe in magic formula? <laughs> Look at this guy. I think. <laughs> Woohoo! Well, many people still do. Uh, this is Shenzhen, and I've got lots of friends and many clients in China, and many people in China actually believe that to be successful on Amazon and whatever marketplace, uh, you know, it's just down to a magic formula and whatever you can do to succeed, as long as it's quick and not too much thinking. So what they do is they look and study the best sellers and they learn to replicate, copy every single uh, uh, comma and uh, bullet points down to the T and hoping this is gonna be great. Also, they've got no remorse to do anything, anything they can, and I can understand that, uh, to getting some review, but sometimes you get ridiculous with 8,000 five-star reviews for a product. Everyone understand that it's quite fake. All right, so the third thing would be something like the price to the bottom. Price war with your uh, other competitors. Obviously, you want to be a business, so you want to make profits. How can that be? A good technique, let me know. Anyway, um, whatever is possible to hack into the system, you know, going the back door, uh, having some fake people in Bangladesh uh, upvote or, uh, you know, hack into other people's listing and image, anything that you probably heard about, you know, is actually not a good strategy for Europe. So, no, it's not a, a very good way to build a profitable, and I insist on profitable business, 
because you can do lots of millions of uh, euros, you know, dollar in euros. Um, but if you're not profitable, what's the point? Keeping your factory happy? Yeah, everyone's going to go to work and at least uh, you make people have a salary. So, well, if that's your thing, okay, maybe continue. But um, that shortcut, uh, shortcut approach, um, which is very still very popular in China, uh, is probably not sustainable if you want to do anything good in Europe. And for me, in my humble opinion, is the best way to lose uh, your time and your money. Just uh, set your money on fire. So before you know it, it might just be too late for your business or you know, Amazon might crack down some of the you know, black hat techniques you've invented so much, invested so much money into. Uh, so again, I don't think that's, uh, that's too much risk for me and I don't think that's sustainable. So, um, but successful businesses in Europe, I've got a secret. They all have that in common. So first about me, why I think this is relevant is I traveled for the past three years to meet and listen to several hundreds of uh, Amazon sellers uh, and I participated in the growth of an actual uh, multiple eight-figure brand. Uh, last time I checked, they did over five million uh, for the last 12 months on the USA. They did three million in Germany. Um, now they're conquering the rest of Europe. Uh, you know, they're, they're about to set in Holland. They're a massive, and that's just one brand. They've got six other brands in other category. They started with just one item, and I will um, go back to that later. Anyway, I also helped, like I said, dozens of uh, Chinese manufacturers start uh, to sell on Amazon in Europe and USA. So I extracted directly from those guys the secret to sell tons of products to millions of Europeans. Even though uh, those sellers, those categories, those products uh, seem all different, I found they had one key ingredient, all of them. Uh, and that is the number one task as an online business is to transfer into your customer's mind a powerful concept. You ready? <laughs> it's a strange and satisfying ID that we marker, marketers call perceived value. You know, for, for some of you, you might be new. For some of you, you might be like, oh, yeah, I know this. But I, trust me, this is the number one factor on the, the intent of purchase for European customers. So let me show you. Just going to play that little uh, movie. Thanks, Ted, uh, because I took that from, from them. So it's a video that's talking about how to shape an ID into people's mind. They talk about ID, but Percy value is, is pretty much the same. You're making connections into the billions of connections they have in their brain to form that value that they can like, they can trust, you know, before they make a purchase. And you can see the happy factors because they're wired in the same sort of sense, even though they're totally different people. All right. So, um, okay, quick question to talk about perceived value. If my brain, and I'm gonna just move this over here. Uh, if my brain was selling a handbag made of 75% of PVC, which is uh, plastic, you know, it's like a polymer, uh, one of the number two or three most used on planet Earth. So quite very popular plastic. Would you, this is the, the description in uh, Wikipedia, would you pay me, and I need to, uh, let's do that maybe. So we're fine. So would you agree to pay for it? 6,670 uh, Singa Singapore dollar, which is equal to $4,700. Well, the answer would probably be no, right? And I love this. Uh, <laughs> Just like, are you mad? Why would I pay you plastic that much? Okay. And so that's when comes perceived value. And you will see this quite powerful. All right. One of my favorite brands, Chanel, is from France. Okay. You see that uh, vanity case, which is probably very, very small. Look, centimeters. It's not like inches, but um, look at that. It's quite tiny, right? 
And it is made of plastic. Even the, that is PU laser, which is uh, a form of a, deriv a derived of plastic, okay? Uh, PVC, patent calf skin, well, apparently there's actually real leather, uh, but I doubt it that for some, some, uh, some of the equipment. Anyway, that's Chanel, right? And they've got silver and tone metal, which is actually uh, those bits. This is not silver. This is not gold. This is nothing like that. This is just stain stainless steel. They make it sound like fuss. So what about that? It is priced at Singapore dollar, $6,670. How come? And you know what, I can tell you, and I'm sure you, you don't even need to check on Google, they have tons of people queuing, well, maybe a bit less with the coronavirus, but people are queuing to buy those bags because they're in a limited number. So how come would they buy plastic and a bit of leather for that much? It costs more than gold. Come on, what is that? Well, that is perceived value. Another example from Chanel, this is completely plastic, right? Oh, okay, there's a bit of metal, but look, $12,000, and this is US door, of course, out of stock. Um, so this is the second hand market. So even after the retail price, people are beating themselves so much to buy that it comes double price on the uh, second hand market. So anyway, um, what is perceived value, really, what it is? Let's agree on the definition. So you can think of it as a relationship uh, between benefits that are expected from someone and the cost they're going to pay. So that means no one is the same. I mean, you can be similar to your brother and your family or your friends or your people at work, but no one's going to be exactly the same, right? On the way they perceive something. You know, if you, if you make a great deal, someone can just look at you and say, well, it's not such a great deal, you know. Uh, that's what I'm trying to say. So values are defined through the eyes of each consumer. And the importance of value depends on the consumer and his purchase, right? So the importance of the value he puts in there, it, it really depends on him and when he puts the money down. Um, and I, I just add there that the national values aren't the same for every marketplace, which everyone would, would agree, right? So the four eyes of consumers through which they're gonna perceive values, these are probably the same for everyone. You could maybe add one or two, but it's probably a good way to uh, um, you know, stereotype the, the, the value system. So the monetary system is obvious. Obviously, you just put the money down for something that you perceive is of value. Let's say I'm going to, uh, well, buy that uh, channel example, that bag. Okay, the, I, I perceive that this is going to be awesome. So I put down $4,000 or $5,000. Uh, so the monetary value, because I pay a lot of money, yes. And because they're rare, yes. So not everybody can buy the real channel bag. So on, not only this, but it's also the social value you, you will see next. Uh, functional value is is just about what your product can do. Is it well designed? Is it really functional? Does it help me solve the problem and respond uh, to my need? You know, uh, this is the functional value. Now the social value, as we just saw with Chanel, if people see me, so now I'm connecting with other people, you see. So if people see me wearing the Chanel bag, they're gonna have like a, a social reaction. It's all about status. You see, if someone see me with a Chanel bag, they'll probably think I'm mad because I'm a man, but then they'll think like, oh, he's got money. So you can show people how much money you have because you put down that money. Even though the plastic is still plastic, you wouldn't buy it for that price. And last is a psychological value. So it's probably just like the social value in terms of uh, emotions, but uh, the difference here is that you actually can express yourself. You see, there's a psychological value that you can express to uh, yourself and feel better about it. An example is, is when you feel sad and, and you're going to go buy something, even an ice cream, you know, um, that gives you a sense of feeling good. And therefore, there's a value, even though the ice cream 
might not be that good. Okay, so those are the four, um, what I call four eyes, and you can see the guy next to you, uh, other consumers. All right, so let's see. Find your products sweet spots. And basically what it is, is um, the consumer based on those four eyes, those four systems of values, they can make a decision uh, in as little of a third of a second. Boom, they see an image, they see a price, they see a title, that's it. They've got a, a good uh, viewpoint of how it's going to be. So they have an idea of what the value of your product is without anything else. So I wanted to uh, show you just like how to think uh, this way. You can see here we've got different countries, the six marketplace of Amazon, all have a different uh, traditional history uh, value system on its own, right? And then in the society of those countries, you've got different level. You've got the low class, you've got the working class, you've got the middle class, high and low, you've got the upper middle class, and then you've got the wealthy people. So all of them will have a different perception of the value they can get. And those are the, the four uh, we just mentioned. Now, what's happening and we're gonna see next is um, the quality is usually in Europe, I'm talking just about Europe here, um, but you can see that throughout the, the six marketplaces in even other countries that you can fulfill from Germany, quality is always gonna be the first thing they look at. Basically, uh, it's back to the functionality. How much they pay for it con concern after the quality. And last is the origin. So if you've got the same quality of two products, same price, well, what they're gonna judge next is the origin. They prefer something that comes from their country and next to their town, if they can choose. So you got to be careful of that. That's how they're gonna make the decision. And this is what you should work around to be successful at implanting that value, that crystal ID or that diamond ID into your customer's uh, mind. All right, you have to understand uh, German people, as well as other European people, but German probably the most, if I need to uh, look at the review of all the Amazon sellers I know, uh, they're probably the most require, uh, they expect the, the most things to happen, the most uh, reliability, the most performance, and then it will slash at your product if you're not there. So you gotta make that in consideration. Uh, so European buyers reference point, I, actually the, the quality, the, the price, and the original product. We just said that. Um, so good, once you know that, and once you know basically every European, sorry for my language, is a pain in the ass customer and will return if they're not satisfied, well, it's not so bad or not so difficult to just surprise your customers every time. So you let them to expect something, but your delivery expectation value is always above, so they can have a good surprise. And that value that they don't expect will make you rise to the top. It might be cost you a little bit, and it's a long-term strategy, but it, it works wonder for you to scale. So keep that in mind. Um, just as good surprise work, bad surprise, they work the same, but the other way. <laughs> that means, you see, your product, or your delivery system, or anything that can go wrong, well, trust me, the bad surprise of a European client usually result with a bad review. Keep that in mind as well. All right, European people, customer, they have high expectation, probably higher than other parts of the world, uh, on the value delivery. When you deliver your products, um, you know, what values you're given. So make sure you, you choose, yeah, before you send your products, Make sure, and you do your marketing, make sure you choose the audience that you, you know you can afford, like your business can afford with money and with you know, operation and all what matters in the technical part. Make sure you can choose an audience that will be blown away in terms of expectation every single time. So you guarantee yourself a success. 
if that makes sense. All right, so um, just wanted to do a, a quick now uh, run about our cultural major difference. Uh, you see, like we we are seen, especially in Asia, uh, Europe is not a country, but very often I hear, "Oh, you are Europeans," just as if it was a country. It is a monetary uh, monetary singular market, but it's far from being just one country. So uh, the best way I can look at it, and thank you for my good friend, super nice friend, uh, Yana from uh, uh, YLT Translation that helped me with a couple of slides. And I wanted to give a big shout uh, out to uh, Yana today. I hope she's watching. Uh, so yeah, this was the example she takes and I love it. Um, it's from Dolce Gabbana when they try to do a marketing uh, advertisement in China uh, with the pizza and you know some chopsticks. I mean, there's pizza in China. No one is retarded, you know, enough to take that. And they completely missed the, the marketing because they didn't do the research. They didn't see that they would get offended or maybe they did that on purpose, but they, since then, Dolce Gabbana in China is no, no, no. Another no, no is uh, Kim uh, Kardashian. Uh, and again, thanks for the slide. Um, Japan, she had a brand of underwear for fitness and you know, getting like your curve up. I'm no woman, but you know what I mean? Um, well, you know, she wanted to create, uh, call it the kimono. Kimono is the traditional, uh, you know, yifu is the traditional outfit for Japan. You do not attack, even though you don't think about it, you do not attack such a word, such a tradition in such a country uh, for your brand. And before she launched her brand in, in all over the world, she had to take everything back, redo the label, cost her fortune to do just because of that one single mistake of not, uh, researching the market properly. Right. So, uh, I suggest you speak your brand language. You, you have an identity as a brand, or if you don't have it, well, it would be start, we'd be good to start now. So speak your brand language, but with your customer local accent. So if it's in Germany, take their accent. And what I mean by accent is just learn who they are, what they do, who's your customer avatar, what do they do when they buy, what's the customer journey, etc. This is technical. I just want to focus on the perceived value. The more you're going to speak with your customer's local language and, and way to, you know, friendly way to, to communicate, the more they're gonna bound with your brand, as opposed to people that just you know use Google Translate, and it doesn't sound very German, it doesn't sound very French, it sounds a bit of a you know Chinglish, and that's a disaster. Uh, let's be honest. Okay, so I wanted to uh, now sort of give you a bit more tips um, and on on a bit more technical, but just something to remind yourself. Um, the number one most determinant factor is also the most overlooked, and that's the market research. That's what I just talked about. You know, if you actually do 20% of the rule, it's a, it's a 20, 80%. If you do 20% of the time you use to, or those people, you know, obsessed about their competitors, if they were using just 20, percent time less worrying about the competition to worry about their customer, know who they are, they would make probably 80% more sales. That's what I believe. So uh, the most determining factor is overlook is the doing the proper research. Then the next one, this is like way, 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 way important. And people still forget about this, but know your numbers, calculate everything before you enter Europe. You need to be profitable. So if you need to revise your price, your strategy, even call your factory and modify your product to see how much you can do with the cost or whatever, you need to be profitable. Otherwise, just you know, pass, pass Europe because you're not gonna be able to continue and scale. You need some profits to do that. Uh, the next one is obvious, but start small. You know, that uh, example, that Chinese seller, uh, which is very good friend of mine, over the years, okay, is doing multiple seven, uh, I think now is a eight, eight um, 
on that brand only, he's got six brands, so he's an eight-figure uh, uh, seller, but on that brand, I think now he reached uh, past eight. So he started with one product, just one product, one market, and it just went from there. And you know, every 20% uh, of uh, uh, profit he was getting at the end, just reinvesting, reinvesting. And he scaled up very, very rapidly, very aggressive, always bringing back to the business. And also in Europe, just like in USA, if you, if you invest your money into, um, if you're being taxed in Europe, and you can dodge the tax by reinvesting into your, uh, your capitals, your profit, into your business. I'm not sure uh, people from Asia would be taxed in Europe, but for the European dudes out there, uh, yeah, some part of the profit, just bring it back to your business, scale up, you won't pay tax, come on. That's what Jeff Bezos does. Um, another big one, and again, you know, people just really stand like, yeah, yeah, okay. But if you keep all of that tidy, if all of your uh, records is in good safekeeping, oh my God, you're gonna have so much less problem. Because you know what, when you expand to international and especially Europe, you know, you've got VAT, you've got tax, you've got uh, norms, uh, you've got lab tests, QC, uh, people can sue you, people are really demanding. Keep everything recorded and have someone professional to do it for you even, you know, hire someone to do it. But the moment you've got an issue, you're covered. You've got your insurance, you've got this, you've got that. You can just flash the document and say like, look, I'm good. I'm all legit. If you keep that, it would be a shield and you will keep on growing your business. So make sure you keep good records at all time uh, and all your legal issues will disappear. Um, compound effect or compound interest, if you want to call that. So it's the artful way of not reinventing the wheel every time. Every step you make need to be in a bank, just like it is money. So after a while, you know, those little steps you're taking, they actually start growing and growing to a moment where your business profits, they're going to go high. You're going to have even too much money. I'm telling you. This is the compound interest. I'm sure you guys know about it. If you don't know, check it out on Google. Compound every step you take in your business and reinvest, reinvest, okay? You, you're building a brand, you're building some equity. If one day you wanna sell the business, that's where the cash, the biggest paycheck, you're gonna come from there. Um, and last, I wanted to uh, use that last, but maybe it's the first thing that you need to do. And that's why I put last because I want this to be actionable for you and I want you to remember is when you make a listing, do not use Google. A guy from Fiverr, just like random, you don't know, because this is going to be very, very, very uh, detrimental for your uh, listing and your sales. You need to be optimized. You know, you need to have your brand optimized, all that. I'm not going to tell you how to play the Amazon game. Uh, you can find that on other uh, com people's content. But once you're, um, you understand the power of optimization, then you know that for each and every country, and that's why you need to start small, one product at a time and one country at a time, you need to uh, maximum the effect of language into your listing. So you don't copy a listing to put it there just because you want to sell. No, no, no. You want straight from the start doing the SEO, search engine optimization of Amazon, right? And you want some keywords related uh, that's gonna make some sales, that's gonna make people see your product into the language of the country you're looking for. So let's look into that a little bit. Again, thank you for uh, Yana for the, the slides. And actually she's got a little promotion for you guys today. Uh, I didn't have that kind of service, you can call me uh, 30 minutes for a call if you want. I will gladly give you that. But Yana, so generous, she said like, hey, you know, if they want, it's, I know it's not my presentation, but if you want, they can contact me for free, uh, free audit of their listing. Okay, so uh, keywords, your title, your bullets, your products, description, etc. Use the local keywords to feature and talk about your brand and your product, okay? All right, so optimized uh, listing versus price. Regular translator versus Amazon experience translators, Google Translate, international marketplaces, and uh, get to know your audience, localization, etc., etc. 
So according to Harvard Business Review, uh, 56% uh, of surveyed people in Europe said that language was the most important uh, thing when they were shopping online compared to price, okay? One of the things that you can see here is the sweetened milk can, uh, you know, it's just basically, this is a sweet milk, you know, very condensed sugar that looks like uh, milk, okay? And if you do Google Translate in Spanish, it comes as la leche azucarada puede. So what is that? Uh, oh, I don't have the image, but, um, oh, sorry. Uh, basically, you, when, you, when you actually, you can do it on your own Amazon, but if you uh, do that research, sorry about that, guys. If you do that research, you will see that you end up into something completely different. So if you use Google half of the time, if not 90% of the time, you're gonna use the wrong words that people don't even use in their country. Uh, and, and, and your product's gonna be nowhere. So Google's a no-no. All right, let's do a little uh, case study, US versus uh, the German market. How to present your company values, uh, service, etc. So that's an example of the listing first, uh, and you can see that is the translation from Google. So uh, that's the original text and translated from Google, you see it's more or less the same size. Uh, you see sorts of fits the size, so you think, oh, that's okay, because you don't understand German. But with Amazon translation, with the SEO keywords, you, you understand that long tail keywords do matter a lot. They do a lot of association in Germany, and that, that only could give you thousands of viewers per month. When I say thousands, it's one keyword key, key could give you 80,000 potential bullseye to look at your product. Uh, so you see, it's totally not diff it's totally not the same anymore. Uh, and that's what you need to take in consideration, guys. All right, here, the US, uh, these are the values, basically. So original, with passion, we go beyond the care. Uh, passion, we go beyond the customer service. But you see, the word care, is too emotional for the German market. It is only used when talking about friends or family, all right? It's just like people, the care. So when you talk about the product care in Germany, people just think it's just fussy, too much, doesn't fit, doesn't feel comfortable, all right? Over there is more like humility. You go beyond the assumptions, the respect, you, you leave, your product live up to their value expectation, the promise you make. So the entire sentence, uh, even the word humility was changed uh, and the German customer do not want to see humble service uh, provider. Um, you get the, the meaning. All right, so this was the result. Uh, here, uh, cool, cooler, coolest, very American way to say, hey, that's really cool. Here is like more elegant and sturdy. So you see it's like, doesn't make so much fuss, but very uh, technically performing. Uh, I don't read German, so I will not try to read the rest, but you see it's very different, uh, very different text. Okay, so this was the little bonus that I just mentioned about. If you want your listing translation done by uh, YLT translation, which is Yana service, uh, please do uh, flash scan her. Uh, she's amazing, you know. Uh, she, she's been like, you know, with this coronavirus, she's been like, uh, stayed at home and she's been helping so many uh, sellers. She's been helping me. So guys, I, I really anticipate you to go and uh, have a chat with her and uh, get your optimization for your listing done. Uh, her service is crazy. She's doing even customer service for 150 bucks, uh, I think, a subscription. Uh, and that's it. You can get as much as you want. Uh, so once you're subscribed, your all customer service is done for for one product. It's amazing. Check it out. All right, this is me. This is my Facebook group, uh, Seller Supreme Gateway. Uh, that's my little logo here. So if you want to check it out on Facebook, this is the link. You probably won't be able to uh, click it, but you can uh, screenshot. And this is my WeChat. So feel free, guys, to call me anytime or book a call with me. 
Uh, I can strategize with you on how to sell into Europe, getting into the technical bits where I couldn't really uh, talk about today. Uh, but remember one thing, the perceived value of European mind is how you're gonna get people to buy and buy and buy. And once they're gonna recognize your brand, it's game over, it's game over, all right? And even though if, if I will give you another extra bit of strategy, is once you conquer one market, once you conquer one category, try to go all the way up and all the way down. Remember, in each country, there's a social uh, ladder, the high end and the low end. People that have money, uh, low mindsets, all different needs and problems of those people. If you do have two or three brands doing the same sort of products, but that cater for everybody, oh man, it's game over. You're gonna, you're gonna be the king of the country. Then you can take to the next country and boom, because of the momentum. Uh, and you know, like Germany, if you sell from Germany, you can actually fulfill in Poland or in the, the you know, like uh, uh, Eastern Europe, they fulfill from anywhere in Europe. Con uh, conservatively, in other country, they only uh, uh, fulfill in their own country. So maybe you start by Germany, if that fits your plan. Um, but yeah, imagine once you conquer one country, like my friend did uh, with this, uh, I can't tell you the product, but I'm so proud of him. Uh, yeah, that, that's how he conquered. And, 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 you know, I think you should do the same uh, for strategy. Okay, that's it for me, guys. I hope you enjoyed uh, the presentation. Uh, I'm very happy to be working with Andy. I think this guy is amazing, gives his students amazing value, taught me about drop shipping. Can you believe it? Now I'm so interested in uh, drop shipping. Uh, master dropship and of course Amazon it rocks the house as well uh, big shout out to my man and uh, Andy AMZ and thanks for having me today <laughs> thank you so much thank you so much uh, and uh, I think what he have shared is uh, a very good value to to a lot of you because uh, I, I see that a lot of my students here you guys are actually going to the uh, what do you call it the um, Europe you know, the market and uh, some of you already asked me about the, you know, the trademark and everything, etc. So I think it's, it's a good time you guys have to go in now. Uh, as a matter of fact, it is the time now. Okay, so um, we're going to have a, uh, okay, let's, there's no questions today. Uh, very quiet. Uh, okay, so if there's no question, then we shall end here. Uh, we're going to go for a break, a lunch break. Guys, do not leave the room, okay? You just maybe, you know, uh, you don't leave the room, you know. Anyway, we cannot see you. We are not going to switch on your camera. And then we'll come back exactly at... Uh, uh, Coach Ben, what time is it? Coach Ben? Yeah, um, we can come time? back at 1. 1 o'clock, okay. Huh? 1 o'clock? 1 o'clock or 1.30? 1 o'clock, 1 o'clock. 1 o'clock? Wow, so packed. Uh. Okay, <laughs> today is a packed day. Uh, so guys, uh, later on, we'll get, um, you know, the first half is more of uh, people from, you know, Euro, from US and everything. The other half, we have people from more on the, uh, you know, on Southeast Asia uh, and also Asia, also uh, like from China, you know, cash is from China. And then uh, we also from, we have people from Philippines and then also from Singapore. So we're going to be a more a mixture of East and West and things like that. Okay. So uh, I'll, I'll catch you guys after that. Okay. So we'll see you at one o'clock. Okay. Thank you so much.